This is a Shields of Shame exclusive, exclusive, exclusive. Of course, my thing was, had you answered your phone and you returned the phone calls, you would have known. Yeah. So, um, is there any kind of official documentation showing when he actually, because I saw the letter, the email he sent, and it, um, it showed two different dates that he wanted to take 14 days from. So I'm trying to figure out how you guys determined the actual um, resignation day. Well, you want to know what date he actually res uh, resigned? That was on the 19th. Yes, but which was earlier than the 14 days that he Exactly what I told him. Because his, <laughs> his contention was that he had no idea. We didn't know. I didn't know. He was trying to lead me to believe, because he sent me his response, that the only dealings or the only issue with your agency was the vaccination, which, of course, that wasn't the fat case. Right. So, um... Do you know, is there any kind of documentation as to why he was taken off the SWAT team and when? Uh, yes, I'm sure it is. I, I, I can pull this file. Wonderful. Um, and also, he is telling me, I tried to reach Lieutenant Sims earlier, but he was in a staff meeting. He is telling me that it's common practice within your agency for officers to have their personal vehicles marked as police cars to work part-time jobs. No, ma'am. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, he told me that he said that Lieutenant um, Sims actually and Lieutenant Eric Love actually saw his vehicle and said it, and they and they were excited about it. So I just didn't really believe that. No. <laughs> No, no. Okay. So, if you any of that information that you have, that I, I just want to be really specific with him because I know where it's going to go. Yes, ma'am. And um, like if I, it was just so hard because he sent me, I mean, everything he sent me, and it, I'm wondering also if he delayed in accepting that registered letter. Uh huh. Because of the date that, I mean, he sent me all these stomp, stamped envelopes and he was showing me that the letter, it looked like it, the, the postmark on it was the 15th, but it wasn't, he didn't actually receive it to the 19th, which to me could be that he refused it until that day or he wasn't home to get it or anything like that. Right, because so I, I looked up the tracking and they, it's listed where the letter was ready for pickup. I want to say it said on the 17th. Right, and then he just didn't pick it up until the 19th. Right. And, of course, I was trying to explain to him that he I, it wasn't clicking because he didn't think there was anything wrong with what he was doing with the blue lights in his personal car. And then, of course, I said, did you represent yourself as SWAT? And he said, initially he said no. I said, well, I'm seeing that you actually did. He says, well, I just told him that so he would hurry up so I could get on my way. Right. I said, but you've misinterpreted as to what you were. I said, that's misleading. And I said, you're lying. Mm -hmm. And he says, well, I just did that so I could get on my way. I said, well, look at it this way. If you're an officer in uniform, he said, and you're stopping somebody and you ask them a question, if they lie to you, you can take them to jail. Right. And he's like, well, it, it was just the craziest conversation I've had in a long time. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> it, it was, I, it just didn't make sense. So I just want to have, make sure I have all my, you know, all the paperwork I need because this just needs to be documented really well. He's upset. He's applied at numerous agencies and nobody's hiring him. Yes, ma'am. So if you could get me any disciplinary history he has and if there's anything official, I saw an email that said that um, you knew you were aware that you were off the SWAT team like in April of 2020. But if there's any kind of paperwork that shows and shows why, he's telling me it was because there was a conflict with another officer on the team. So. Um, no, I think it was some some, some information. Uh, I know he has discipline. Like I said, I can pull that, but just. Okay. Me, I, I want to say it has something to do with 
him being in SWAT school, something he wasn't safe or. Okay. I, I can't remember the exact details, but I'll pull the. Yeah, just um, as long as I can show that he was officially notified, he knew specifically he wasn't on the SWAT team. I mean, but when he started trying to tell me that that your agency allows you to use your cars like that, I'm like, there's no way. That's so much of a liability. No way. No way. And I, I was trying to attach the video. If you need me to I've, actually, I've requested it from Forsyth because I'm, that way I had it because I wanted to make sure that I listened to the audio of what he actually said, especially since he's disputing everything that's being said. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. So, so I, I'm going to get that from them. That's not a problem. But I just wanted to make sure I had all the paperwork, all his disciplinary history. And then he's also saying, and this is probably come up if, if he um, gets revoked, he's saying that there's other officers within the agency that have police cars, their personal vehicles marked like that. I said, okay. well, I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah, neither, no. Okay. okay. Well, I appreciate your time. I just, I just want to make sure I do everything I need to on this one. Yes, ma'am. And do you need, I, I guess, you have. do you have my email address? To uh, is it M. Franklin? It is, yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. I'll send that to you. Um, and I'll send you the email. Well, I certainly appreciate you calling me back and getting that for me. I just, I've never really had one like this before. Yeah, it's a little different. <laughs> well, thank you so much, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Bye-bye. Georgia Post Investigator Franklin. Hey, ma'am. How are you? This is Lieutenant Sands from Martin. Hey, sir. Thank you so much for calling me. I, I was going to send you an email. I was out all morning. I didn't want to bother you while you were working. Oh, no. It's, it's no problem. <laughs> and I apologize for yesterday. The meeting ran long. I understand. And by the time I got clear, I figured you were long gone. <laughs> I understand. I have a quick question. I, I don't know if you're aware or not, but we're we're, in, we're doing an investigation regarding, I mean, his name is Nilsen Moraes, or? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Moraes. Moraes. And he, he was actually um stopped in in um Forsyth for having blue lights and markings on his personal vehicle. Oh, wow. Well, and when I spoke to him yesterday, he told me that you were aware that he had this on his vehicle. No, ma'am. Okay. Um, I was aware that he had his personal vehicle modified. Um, not real clear on the blue lights aspect and definitely had no knowledge of markings on, on this vehicle. Okay. He he told me that the agency allowed other officers to do this as well because they would use the um, their personal vehicles when they um, did extra jobs at like parking at shopping centers or in um, apartment complexes. Is that fair to say, or is that inaccurate? That would be inaccurate. Okay. If I could put blue lights on mine, I'd put them on it just <laughs> to get the traffic. Yes, sir. You know, um, to, to some degree, and they're not supposed to, but I'm sure they use their personal vehicles to sit in. Like, um, if you're working in the parking lot um, to deter uh, car thefts or something like that, I'm pretty sure they probably do it that way. But even by policy, they shouldn't be doing that. Okay. But marking it with, with blue lights? No, no, ma'am. Okay. Well, he was a member of the SWAT team. Were you a member of the SWAT team when he was on there? Uh, no, ma'am. Okay. All right. So, yeah. So I'm I'm sorry to have bothered you. That's what I was trying to confirm. He said that you had knowledge that he had this on his vehicle, and nothing was ever said. And then also, just you know, reiterated that other people in the department are doing the same thing. So I just wanted to get um, clarification. Not, not to my knowledge, and I'm pretty sure you can um, chime in on this one as well. Uh, I've been in law enforcement since 2000, and that's always been illegal. Um, exactly. <laughs> so, no ma'am. Right, he, um, he actually acted surprised when I told him it violated state law. He said that he was not aware of that and that his... Oh, wow. Right, so. But, <laughs> thank you so much for calling and, and I, I'm just going to mark down what you told me. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, sir. You be safe out there. You, you do the same. Thank you. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm, bye. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this series. It is a doozy. It's a doozy, man. And while I was editing this, these videos, a lot of things he said really stood out to me. And a lot of the uh, things that 
were discussed in the interviews really stood out so I put in a ton of open records so one of the things that that was kind of frustrating is he faked the whole SWAT police van but he didn't fake the dash cam or the body cam or anything like that so he's not we don't have any footage of what he's doing so what I had to do was is put in open records in all of the surrounding counties show you that here We'll start off over here in Clayton. Um, in all the surrounding counties looking for any law enforcement contact with this guy using his tag number. I'm going through E911 services, the 911 call centers. Just so you guys know, these these call centers are not all connected, right? So, I mean, they are, but they're not. They like they're, Each sheriff's department, police department, has their own individual 911 center. So they're not all sharing like information. Well, we pull this guy over, and he had blue lights, and the city's on SWAT. Because some some officers may have taken his word for it, based on his ID and you know the the emblems and all that good stuff. So we got requests going into all the surrounding counties looking for any law enforcement contact, any CAD reports, using his tag number and description of his van and his name. So hopefully we'll get a hit on that. We got requ same the same request in with uh, Cherokee County. Got one in with uh, Cobb County. We've got one in with Fulton County. We've got one in with Gwinnett. We've got one in with DeKalb County. And I've also got several requests in with Marta Police Department and the Forsyth County Sheriff's Office. So we're looking for we're looking for additional records here because I'm not sure why that cop didn't search his van. He had probable cause based on the uh, the illegal blue lights. It is state law. You cannot have those on a vehicle like like the Georgia Post Council uh, investigator Franklin said. You, you got to have, it's got to be a state issued vehicle. So they had probable cause to search and I really wish they had done that, man. They would have they done it to anyone else, but they didn't. They just let him go. Now we're just waiting on more records, more and more records. Hopefully we can reverse the 911 calls to the cop's body cam that had the interaction because the CAD report is going to have all of that information. You know, we're, 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 we're in the middle of uh, an investigation. I really want to know more about this guy and what he was doing out there in this fake SWAT van. But I, look, I appreciate you guys supporting me, man, in this content. And you're the reason why we, we have this. You're the reason why. Whether you like the video, whether you shared it, whether you subscribed, or whether you contributed. Whatever you did, how, however you're listening to me right now, you're the reason why we're getting to see this. There's no news stories on this. No one's talking about it. It was completely swept under the rug. Completely. Most of the cases I cover are. But anyway, I got some highlights. I'll show you guys some highlights in part one and part two. I just kind of really scaled it all the way down to the parts that I thought were interesting. So enjoy that. I appreciate your support. Peace and love. Don't touch my van, sucker. Um, let me ask you a question. Are you a, a, are you a police officer somewhere? Yes, Martha. And where? Martha. You're a MARTA police officer? Yeah. Okay, is this your MARTA vehicle? This is my POV. This is your personal vehicle? Yeah. Why do you have blue lights in your personal vehicle? Because it was on the SWAT team. SWAT team. You're on the SWAT team and you're yeah. driving your own personal vehicle for MARTA SWAT. This is your personal vehicle? Yes, it is. Okay. So I just got in behind him. Didn't have any probable cause to stop him. Couldn't read the tag because he's got a tag cover on it. We could have stopped him on that. When he pulled him behind City Hall, I pulled him behind him. He activated blue emergency lights. He is a MARTA police officer. It's a jacked up, like, I want to call it a four-wheel drive van. But it's got police interceptor on it. It's got emergency lights on it. Oh, I'm going to hold on to you for just a second. My supervisor's coming. I got some concerns I need to talk to you about. I just have some concerns because we had a complaint in regards to you turning your blue lights on on 400. You're in a personal vehicle with blue lights on it, and I'm just kind of boggled by the fact that, I mean, I don't work in Atlanta, I have no idea, but I mean, I know he's a certified peace officer, but this, this is a little ridiculous. You resigned in lieu of termination, correct? Or while you were under investigation? Yes, I did not know it was a coincidence, but I didn't know the 
they were investigating that. They said they will not talk with me because I'm no longer employee. Can you explain that? And then it was a crazy dude driving a 400. I just light up my, my vehicle so I'll, I'll get noticed, you know, so they will see there's law enforcement around. So you're saying that this officer never asked you why you had blue lights on your vehicle or anything? No, he asked, he asked before, uh, he asked before, and I, I did, uh, because I was in a hurry, I was late for my test, I was, why? Uh, I just said that to speed up things. And by the way, I did not know he was investigating me. For me, it was just a friendly conversation. I didn't know he was investigating something. Why do you still have blue lights on your personal car if you're no longer on SWAT? I just said that just to, to be quick, but I did not know by that time he was kind of investigating something. They never said uh, I couldn't have it. That's violating state law if you attach blue lights to a personal vehicle. Yeah, I did not know. I did not know. I was aware of that. Which supervisor saw your van and didn't ask you if it was authorized? Well, two commanders, uh, uh, Lieutenant Love, Eric Love, uh -huh. and he knew. Uh, he never said that I couldn't. And also Lieutenant Raymond Sims. Raymond Sims, also, okay. Also, other supervisors, uh, I could say. Uh, so you're uh, saying other supervisors in MARTA have personal vehicles that are marked as police cars? Because your, your van says police on it, and it says police interceptor, and has blue lights, correct? Or it did on November 10th. But once everything was removed. You have to have a permit or you have to be with a legal a law enforcement agency to be driving with that on the street. So if you turn your blue lights on, somebody thought you were actually acting in official capacity. Yeah, I, I didn't know that. So you're disputing the fact that you resigned while under investigation because you're saying you didn't know about the investigation. Is that correct? Yeah, I didn't know. If I knew, I simply would handle it. There was no charge and... And it was all good. And I guess Marta was a little bit concerned about how you responded to the officer because you told them that you were um, actually on the SWAT team, which you weren't. Yeah, I said I was. I didn't know he was investigating something because he didn't have blue lights. He wasn't <laughs> an official well, pullover because I pulled him. You know, I, I went to him and uh, I was the one who stopped him. He didn't state what was wrong. He, you know, he didn't say it. Why do you have blue lights in your personal vehicle? Because it was in sort team. And I said, what, what's wrong? And, oh, just some concerns, I hang tight. Did you yeah. voluntarily resign from SWAT or was there another reason that you left SWAT? No, I was placed on PIP once because of uh, something that happened with a uh, personal issue with uh, acting supervisor. And uh, I was placed on PIP, and once I was on PIP, I, I was no longer eligible to stay on SWAT. And then I'm uh, sorry, you were placed on what? PIP. It's, uh, it's P P I P. Okay. Pip. <laughs> well, that was a long story. If you want to know, uh, sure. Want to know that? I do. Yes, sir. Okay. So. Uh, it uh, was a personal issue with an uh, acting supervisor, Corporal, Corporal Clark. Uh, it was a personal issue. Uh, he was uh, trying to get me fired. And in one day, he stuck up like six violations or so. Uh, just one day, it was something I heard of. He was hunting me through the camera system, uh, going days back, trying to catch single things, stupid things, petty stuff. And to 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 build up a case against me to get me fired. We didn't know. Did you ever register those blue lights or try to get any kind of permit for having those on your personal vehicle? No, as I said, I did not have the knowledge that I needed. Yesterday I received a call from uh, Sam Springs uh, to start the hiring process, but I, I'm not there until I finish this uh, investigation. So it was one more opportunity that I lost. So do I have an idea uh, when, when this uh, investigation will, will, will okay. finish up and, and have some hope, something Did like that? The, the, the problem with the process is you can be hired. It, it, it's just up to the agency. Yeah, so I, I cannot be hired. 
You can, you, but you have, you cannot get a new certification. They can't send you to school to be a jailer or corrections officer. You have to be hired to be basic law enforcement. Oh, okay. Like, like I don't have certification. Come on, man. You know, all of them are anonymous. They, when they get to know that I'm on investigation, they, they said I'm not eligible. They don't want to take chances. Even though they did not mention anything in, in that email chain, they didn't advise me that I was on investigation at all. Okay, so basically, they, they called you on November 10th and left a message. You, you, they, um... Then on November 10th, you submitted a resignation letter that said you wanted your, to wait two weeks. Then on November 12th, they contacted you again on the phone, but there was no answer. But then on the 13th, you sent an email that said that you were going to resign anyway because of the vaccine. No, it is not anyway because on the voice message, there's nothing stating uh, the 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 reason, the subject of the call. I, I thought they want to give me a, a offer. Not just just show up with the whole thing. Everything was a big coincidence. That's all good. So that's it. Even if there's no charges, the fact remains is that you misrepresented something to a law enforcement officer. You misrepresented what you were. But but I was I, I, I was police officer. I'm the okay. real deal. The big deal is you're in your personal vehicle with blue lights that aren't authorized by the state. Yeah, I, I didn't know. And you didn't even have jurisdiction where you turned your blue lights on. You have no jurisdiction there. But I didn't know. I wasn't aware of that. Action, basically, of what happened with the other officer in Forsyth County is what the whole, is. that's what I'm dealing with. Yeah, that's why the, my whole defense was based on. They attempted to notify you. You just chose not to answer the phone or return the phone calls. I have no crystal ball. How can I know? I wasn't aware of what's going on, you know. Resign on the investigation, so I cannot get a job anymore. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm stranded. I cannot get a job. I lost four opportunities already, you know, well. because of that. So, of course, I would face it. Yes, sir. Easily. I would just face it. Because <laughs> it wasn't a, uh, you know, like I didn't kill nobody. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. So, right. So, it, all right. Well, much easier to face it. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, what I'll do is, like I said, I'm going to get with Marta to get a few more things. They assumed that I knew the, the information, but I didn't know it. I didn't, didn't uh, know it. Yes, this is Neil Summarize again. Yes, I did not know. Can you explain that? Yes, I did not know. Can you explain that? Yes, I did not know. For me, it was just a friendly conversation. Friendly conversation. I did not know. That's violating state law. Yes, I did not know. with a legal a law enforcement agency to be driving with that on the street. Yes, I did not know. For me, it was just a friendly conversation. How do you have blue lights in your personal vehicle? I did not know. Can you explain that? But I didn't know. I wasn't aware of it. Did you ever register those blue lights? I did not have the knowledge that I needed. That's violating state law. Yes, I did not know. Yes, this is Neil Summarize again. Yes, I did not know. Can you explain that? But I did not know. Can you explain that? Yes, I did not know. Can you explain that? For me, it was just a friendly conversation. Friendly conversation. I did not know. That's violating state law. Yes, I did not know. I was aware of that. You have to have a permit, or you have to be with a legal, a law enforcement agency to be driving with that on the street. 